Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. This is Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, AJ Styles makes his big return. We have your final battle results and recap. The Devils make a half-hearted attempt at Joe and MJF. And Ilya Dragunov is working an injury angle. That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. I think the three of us, five, three beer in, we get to do it better than what them jokers did. Boo! Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Marks. Welcome to the Band from Ringside podcast. As always, I am your host, Bill Vegi, a.k.a. Angels. We have... What up, turd? On high and sitting directly across from me, we have Jason and Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? I knew you were a beefer when you walked in. And on that lovely note, I'll ask their congregation to bow their heads as I read from the latest edition of the Band from Ringside podcast, volume 339. Chapter 3, verse 14, and the good smart saith, hashtag, boo the heels. It was all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat the holy trinity of BFR. Good to be back. Go on to the weather. Thank you for all the well wishes, but your boy's back. Watching wrestling per use, just getting back to the swing of things at work. You know how we do it, but... Like I said, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me back on this motherfucker. Speaking of good to be back, out there in Portland, Oregon, we have two beers. Zach Coleman, what's going on? Two beers, Zach. BFR West is in the house. Yeah, I uh, had, a, had a school event for my son last week, and I was also maybe the most hungover that I've ever been. So uh, it, would, uh, I, it would not have been good for me to be on the pod last week. Uh, I? But I am seven seven days, eighteen hours, twenty one minutes, and seven seconds sober right now. So uh, we're feeling good. Can I ask a question? Yeah. When, when you were banged up, did you go to this school event all banged up, or did you just this kind of happen? You know, just sweat in the car. <laughs> I was uh, I was just hungover. So the school event was at like six thirty. We usually do this at six my time, and um, I was so sick that I still hadn't, like, eaten anything before I, like, went to the school event. Um, yeah, it was bad. Ugh, you, you were, like, too hungover to eat. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. One, one time, so. one, I remember thinking one time, laying, I was, uh, it was when I lived in the city, I remember laying on the couch one day, and I was home by myself, and I was like, I think I'm too hungover to watch TV. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> like, that. that's how bad. So, I've been there. Before. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then you watch two hours of wrestling. I th- I don't. I think I. God, you know what? I got to be careful what I say in the first five minutes of the <laughs> podcast because I know a lot of people listen to the first five minutes. <laughs> Ask me in an hour and a half, and I'll tell you what I think I did instead. Yeah, but, that's uh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, and sitting directly to my right, what up, turd? We got Vice. What's up, Bo? Hey, I got my Christmas sweater on. I'm ready to have some fun with my boys. Because yeah, yeah. uh, you know what? The cream of the crop. Oh, man. I'm so jealous of this motherfucker, man. Macho has always pretty, been pretty one of my nice favorites. We might take a picture of it and put it on Friends of BFR. We might put it on Twitter. It is uh, Macho Man Randy Savage in a very, very festive, uh, festive. I mean, it's a beautiful, Jesus beautiful Christ. piece of clothing, really. I mean, it's very nice. He's doing elbow drops and snowmen. <laughs> <laughs> it also looks like he's doing a shot of milk. What is that? What's he holding? It's, it's a, a thimble. Cream. Oh, it's heavy cream because it's the cream of the crop. Oh, I got you. I got you. Is there something I'm missing? One of his uh, f- most famous promos is that he said the cream always rises to the cr- uh, the top. Oh, I didn't even. Yes, I know that. Oh, take away my wrestling podcaster card. Let's get to that three count. One, two, three. JCB, kick it off. Um, I want to talk AJ Styles. That motherfucker looked jacked. Me and Bo was talking about this on Friday night. AJ Styles returns to a SmackDown in a surprising, uh, well, uh, some people knew the spoiler. I didn't know the spoiler, but I didn't either. Apparently, uh, this was already out there. So when I saw it, I, I was losing my mind, apparently, premature or post maturely, whatever the case may be. AJ comes back and attacks. Making up words. Yeah, right. AJ comes back and attacks L.A. Knight, which was a bit of a surprise. But then I guess people were just like were trying to remind me that L.A. Knight took 
AJ Styles spot in the John Cena match against the Bloodline. And I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense, but I don't even think AJ needs that kind of rationale. AJ can just come back and be like, fuck LA Knight, and that would work for me. Neither here nor there. I thought this was a, a nice, another re- surprise uh, appearance, reveal, whatever, uh, return, whatever word you want to use in the sentence for AJ Styles. Um, I don't know what him and Randy Orton was been doing in the, their off time, but they both came back and put on some nice Fucking little steroids. I mean, Jesus Christ. AJ came out. I was like, who the fuck is this? I know what they've been doing. The cream and the clear. <laughs> oh, my God. The, cr- the cream of the clear. So <laughs> This motherfucker came back jacked. I was like, okay, shit, I see you, AJ. But ultimately, it for me, in the, I guess, the big picture, it just adds AJ Styles to the mix of top-tier stars on SmackDown. We were kind of saying uh, around the uh, Survivor Series how it was so raw heavy on the top of the card. Now you add Punk, you bring Orton back, you bring AJ back. Now SmackDown feels like it's about on par to where Raw is, if not better, depending on who you like. But AJ returns to save the day, or does he? Zach, what do you think about the big return of AJ Styles? AJ Styles is just at home taking human growth hormones so he can ride the Mr. Freeze at Six Flags and uh-uh. he ends up just getting ripped. <laughs> Nigga, you ain't shit. <laughs> it ain't going to make him taller. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it's good. Uh, he's got you know a lot of star power, and he adds a lot. Um, so um, he might be done with the bricks, but he's definitely one of the best wrestlers around. Definitely one of the best wrestlers around. I mean, this is an embarrassment of riches about uh, that WWE is uh, swimming in right now. We talked after Survivor Series about how stacked they looked headed into WrestleMania season with Punk and Orton coming back. I mean, I kind of forgot about AJ Styles, to be honest. I mean, and him coming back, yes, he did look jacked. And, yes, it was nice having him back. I would have... I would have cut his hair. I mean, enough with the soccer mom haircut, man. Like, would you pull up in a Dodge Caravan? Come on. But, let's see. but um, it's fine, Karen. It's fine. <laughs> what I really liked about the segment was AJ Styles comes back to make the save, turns on LA Knight immediately. Randy Orton's face was priceless. Great. I love Randy was like, and all right, boy. That is, that is <laughs> you the, ain't fucking with me? Cool. That's the kind of face that uh, Randy or- Orton, as the apex predator, character should have he's not one of these baby faces that does things for altruistic reasons and um aj styles looks like he's going to be one of those heels i mean the bloodline jumped him it wasn't it wasn't la Knight that jumped him i mean he might have a reason and i look forward to his promo but i think aj styles la Knight sounds like a pretty intriguing WrestleMania match, if it makes it that far, probably won't make it that far, but that sounds like a pretty intriguing pay-per-view match either way because AJ Styles can get good matches out of okay wrestlers, and LA Knight is a guy that that can talk, and his wrestling is, you know, ho-hum. For lack of a better phrase, and I'm not, I'm not hating on the man. I don't know. Ouch! I, I, that's, you always make that face whenever I talk about La Knight's wrestling prowess, but he's just not. I, I mean, ahead. he's he's not. He doesn't tear it up in the ring or anything. He's not. He's not at the level on the on the card because of his in ring acumen. I'm not putting him on the the Will Ospreay, Seth Rollins, oh my AJ God. Styles level. No, they play different sports. I'm not. <laughs> Jesus Christ Almighty! L.A. Knight is in the bathroom like <laughs> Zach Pop. Doo, 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 doo. Oh shit! Shrapnel. Um, he's above average, and at this point, that's what you need. I don't need him to to tear the house down. I got other guys to do that. I need him to be a WWE superstar, and that's what he's doing. So in this scenario, this will work. This will be a nice little bridge to the Rumble. If, it, like you said, if it goes to WrestleMania. Okay, I don't necessarily see that personally, but that's just me. Um, I think that this is the type of – this is the re- – AJ Styles is at the right level for an L.A. night WrestleMania match. Zach, where are you sitting on this? I think that's good. I think JCB saying he's above average is like mom being happy when he got C pluses on test. Just hey, 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 man, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, don't, I ain't a father, so, I, you know, I, I can't re- necessarily relate to that. For this exercise, I'd rather him be above average than below. Hey, he's still passed, no, right? I, 
Yeah, I'm with uh, I'm with Bill on that, and uh, I think that's uh, a fun match. Um, good spot. Uh, I really they don't bring back too hard though. That's that's been pretty lame and probably the most ineffectual stable that uh, WWE has going on. So I mean, I know that I'm Gallows and Anderson. I I don't want me. I'm just you know not have a job or anything. But um, right. that stable's been just ass pretty much maybe it's injury maybe they haven't all been together but the product is better with aj than it is without it um i just don't know if the oc is where it's at all right uh jason what else happened uh qualify well i shouldn't say qualifying matches but the u.s title tournament continues on you had carmelo hayes returning to smackdown defeating grayson waller i thought that was pretty solid not a huge surprise that carmelo goes over but it's Good to see that happen. It's just, unfortunately, Grayson Waller has to take the L. Speaking of, unfortunately, somebody has to take the L. Austin Theory takes the L over KO. Once again, not a huge surprise. The cast on KO's hand comes into play in the finish. Taking out Austin Theory, I don't think it was necessarily needed per se, but uh, just for the record, that's how it happens. Comments either way on either match. Uh, Zach, what do you think? Sorry, uh... Austin Theory versus, uh, who was it, KO? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, KO should be the one to go over uh, for sure. So, as far as the match, it was what it was. What was the other match you said? I'm sorry. Grayson Waller, Carmelo Hayes. Oh, yeah, that one. Um, I could have gone either way on that. Uh, Carmelo going over was kind of nice because he's like the NXT guy, and I thought that was very cool. And Grayson Waller is kind of in that role where he's like, it doesn't matter if he wins or loses. Like he's just got that personality. Like he's not there to be a guy who like is a dynamic uh, in ring guy or like a guy who you know needs to go over all the time. Like he can lose. He's like the Miz. He's like a new Miz uh, where he, uh, he's just entertaining. Uh, so yeah, good for Carmelo Hayes. That was that was super neat. I feel like they're really pushing for. Uh, the story that they're telling, though, is KO versus Logan Paul. That just feels like the match because Logan's been, you know, digging in on KO. So I feel like no matter who wins, I just felt like this whole tournament, it's been KO the whole time. Yeah, the Grayson Waller Miz comp is good. Um, I know that they both have shows, so it might it might be obvious, but, like, the Miz's ceiling was really high. I mean, it was high enough to main event at WrestleMania and be a multi-time, two-time Grand Slam. So, Grayson Wall, I think Grayson Waller's ceiling is really high also, as is Carmelo Hayes. I liked this match a lot. Watched, mm-hmm. it, watched it the whole way through. Uh, wasn't I watched it on my phone, so I couldn't dick around on my phone while I was watching it. And, uh, man, I really I really liked this. Uh, Grayson oh, Waller pulled out some move that... yeah. I off the top row, I was like, "Holy but, shit!" But it was like, "What is that move?" I have no idea. But whoever he stole it from, bad. That motherfucker's nice, <laughs> <laughs> right? I think Carmelo Hayes is the fucking future, man. He, they didn't have a name for it. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't know what to call it. Yeah, it was just it came out I was literally said, right you, field. I was just like, "Oh, he shit. said I've never seen that. I'm not sure what to call it." Yep, it, it was sweet. Whatever it was, I I will tip my hat to that motherfucker. It was nice. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Karrion Cross being repackaged again. I'm just, God bless Triple H. If he can work his magic on Karrion Cross, then that that's going to be the tip of the hat as far as I'm concerned. I just don't get it. We're trying it again with Karrion Cross. God bless him. You know, hopefully this shit works out this time. Damage Control with a pretty good promo with Bailey seemingly leading said promo. I found that curious just in the sense that I feel and I think most others feel the same way that slowly but surely Bailey is being on the way out, but she felt like she was speaking for the entire group. The Kabuki Warriors becoming the women's tag team champions. Looks like they're pulling back a bit on Turner Bailey just yet, though, doesn't it? Uh, maybe. It. I'll say this for this promo when she was giving all the props, she was going to say she said she was going to beat Rhea in the uh, at WrestleMania after winning the Rumble. Dakota's the mastermind. It's it's a nice little feel good moment for now. It almost feels like take a picture of this because somewhere down the line, this ain't going to be the way it is as we see it. That's just me. Uh, <laughs> sorry, while you, was talk- while you were talking, I just uh, remembered for the first time since I watched that Chase U skit uh, this week. <laughs> sorry. Maybe I, maybe I am high. Uh, Zach, do you have any thoughts? 
I think them waiting, the longer they wait, the more impactful it'll be, like, if it happens. Are they actually, are they calling them the Kazuki Warriors again? Yeah, they sure are. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I didn't notice. I've watched, I watched everything, uh, but yeah, I didn't notice. I think it's kind of cool that they're bringing it back. Um, it's still just such a fucking wild tag team name to me. <laughs> just, <laughs> it really is. Um, but uh, yeah, what else? Oh, uh, Jason, what else we got? What uh, what about uh, our girl Charlotte Flair? Out for nine months. Um, it was you could get, you could see it if you were, go back and watch the match, but it, it basically was a spill off of the top rope. Um, Unfortunate, obviously, just because, you know, Charlotte is one of the names in the women's division. But there is plenty of other star power that is there. Sasha Banks apparently is not going to work with AEW, so she's definitely back in play now. Um, It's unfortunately, but Charlotte is probably going to be earmarked for Rhea, either Rhea versus Charlotte 2 or Rhea versus Becky. Either way, you have fallback options. Bianca Belair could be an also another possibility as well. But Charlotte out for nine months is going to suck. So hopefully, you know, she can get back sooner versus later. But, yeah, that's a bad news. I, I was thinking that they were going towards the four horsewomen, four horsewomen versus damage control with Bailey out of damage control. That could have been a fun WrestleMania match. And then you have Bianca win the Rumble and Bianca challenges Rhea Ripley. Um, that would have been what I would have fancy booked if Charlotte hadn't gotten hurt. What do you think, Zach? That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Charlotte, though, even though she was uh, hurt, uh, she still got her bag, and she is uh, signed to WWE for five more years, and she's one of the top eight talent there, so good for her. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's one of those things where... Did you just congratulate Charlotte on getting hurt? No, she got no. Congratulated her on getting a new contract. <laughs> I hope she's got insurance. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm worried about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I don't know. I'm not the biggest Charlotte fan in, in the world, um, but uh, she is a big big star. Um, so yeah, WWE. Uh, Bummer, you don't want anybody to get hurt. WWE Women's Match of the Year was Charlotte Rhea. If you ask me, that might be the Women's Match of the Year. Totes. Mm. Yeah, it was great. I I, I can't say I, I disagree with that. I mean, <laughs> it it basically put Rhea Ripley on the map, and that's you know in part to Charlotte. So, it like I said, it sucks, but you know they got enough talent that they can move somebody up. We'll get they'll somebody be high. fine. Yeah, no question. Uh, Santos talking about, beef, talking about best matches. We got beefers coming up. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, I, sh- I was thinking, man, this would have been a good week to do the beefers because we're all here. There's not really, we're not going to get any matches of the year uh, before the, in the next seven days or whatever. So We got more than that shit. Yeah, all right. So, you know, I was thinking we could have done the beefers, but start thinking about your beefers, boys. I've been keeping notes all year. At least that was my plan. I stopped around the middle of February. <laughs> <laughs> get ready for the beefers. We got some beefers over here. Can um, I get a beefer? Santos, last week preview for next week. Um, I already saw the spoiler, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then, obviously, the main event, you had Randy Orton and Jimmy Uso. Orton goes over. AJ flips. We already discussed that. Let's run over to Raw real quick. Uh, it opens up with a match with J.D. McDonough versus R-Truth. R-Truth has been an absolute comedy gem since returning. He makes this match a loser-must-leave Judgment Day match and then proceeds to win said match. I could not help but to giggle my narrow ass off. I almost feel bad for J.D. McDonough, but, damn it, he's getting over in a scenario where he's pretty much the outside guy looking in on Judgment Day, even though he's in Judgment Day. This was a spot where you couldn't have Dom do this number, but J.D. McDonough, McDonough is the perfect guy to take the fall to R-Truth, so R-Truth wins the opening match to start off Raw. He's a wheeler either Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> No, it is perfect. He is the little brother of Judgment Day. He is there to take them pins, make those moves, 
Great comp. Two beer, you are. Like, you guys rip on me 13 or 14 more times, and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, you got a squeak. <laughs> Nia and Becky had a, um, I guess, confrontation again. They'll be wrestling on day one, whenever that is. I guess that's next week or two weeks from now. It's two weeks? Isn't it on day one? Day one, Monday. Monday, so two Monday. weeks from uh, yeah. from Monday, uh, New Year's Day, I guess. There you go. Um, Miz and Gunther had a re- another rematch for the IC title. If Miz loses, he can no longer challenge Gunther as long as he's the Intercontinental Champion. Another oppressive Gunther match. I'll be the first to admit it. I think Gunther is somebody that should be on the short list of wrestler of the year. And I don't care what federation it is, what promotion it is. Gunther has been extremely impressive. The only thing I can even say that I have a problem with his title run is a lot of it's been happening on Raw's and few have been happening on pay-per-views. That's the only thing that I can have a, a beef with it. Outside of that, Gunther has been an amazing talent to watch, just watching him transform his body, you know, learning the language, and now having this great Intercontinental Championship run, bringing the, the title and him both up at the same time, having great matches with the Miz again. Um, it's, it's so much to be said about Gunther, and I don't think we say enough about Gunther, even though we do give him his flowers. Zach? Yeah, this match was really good. I can't believe how much the crowd bought the near falls. And they were just really into it. Uh, the title reign has been great. Um, you know, speculation, you know, it, it's time for him to drop it. And it's time for him to move up to the, the main event scene. Uh, so Are you going to say I what I think what, you're going to say? What? Mm, that he's going to win the Rumble? Mm, 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 oh, I think he could be one of the last ones mm, in the Rumble. But oh, Brock Lesnar. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Oh, uh, mm, 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 that would be perfect. Mm, yeah. Mm, no, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking of more who's gonna who he's, he's gonna lose it to, and uh, you know if, if he wasn't currently like doing the NXT thing, I think Dragon Lee would be a, a great opponent um, to elevate uh, immediately because you know the dude can wrestle. Um, those two would be able to put on. Those two would be able to burn the house down together. That shit would be yep. bonkers. Uh, it yeah. would be. It but would... who do you guys think it will be? Man, I, I still got Chad Gable. I think that's past. Yeah, I it's, I don't think I definitely don't think it's Chad Gable. Um, man, I I don't even know. They're not even setting anybody up right now. Bronson Reed doesn't seem like it's going to be Bronson Reed. Uh, see, Dragon Lee just seems like he's got that upward thing. I I, I know that the, the North American was kind of a fluke because he wasn't even supposed to be in that match, so maybe he'll lose that and it, it will be him. Um, my personal pick, I've said this before, that I would love to see is big, strong boy, Tyler Bates. Um, well, they yeah. Come do, do a, do a five-and-a-half-star match for him to win. and um, You know, because Triple H was behind uh, Tyler Bates. You know, they gave him that, that UK title. He was the first UK champion. He had it for a while. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't want to get sidetracked. But uh, he, it's time, based on what I'm saying, is it's time for him to lose the title to elevate somebody, and it's time for him to be – the main event because he is uh, an absolute top guy. Couldn't agree more. T- uh, could, couldn't agree more. And I think the Dragon Lee is a really good call, too. So I like the Dragon Lee call a lot. Yeah. Uh, Post match, Gunther says, tells Imperium he's going to take a break to recharge his batteries. I think that's a, a nice little move. Get Gunther off the, the map for a little bit. Um, let Imperium, you know, implode him amongst themselves so he has something to come back and bitch about. Nakamura with a, a nice little vignette uh, that leads into Cody attacking um, Nakamura backstage. I'm assuming this is going to be on the day one show as well in two weeks, so something else to look forward to. Nakamura has just been really good, uh, rebuilt under Triple H. I know I've said it before, but this Nakamura has been way more interesting than anything on the main roster going – the NXT Nakamura was the Nakamura that I like. This is the Nakamura I like, the shit that's in the middle. I'll tell you what. You get rid of that. If I'm Cody Rhodes, I'm not letting Nakamura get through half of that fucking story. Cody Rhodes just let him fucking read that shit. Called his daddy. Cody, and Cody you got to get him. Zach, what do you think? Was it this past week or was it the week before where they did, like, the whole anime thing? That was this week. This week. 
That was awesome. Thought you were more of a hentai guy. <laughs> I'm equal opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Merv the perv. <laughs> that sounded so try, sleazy. Try anything once. Caden <laughs> <laughs> Carter and uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Katana Chance, Caden Carter defeat Chelsea and Piper Nervin to win the Women's Tag Team Championships. Good for them. Hopefully they can do something with that. I have no faith in that storyline, the the titles, whatever the case may be, props in this scenario. Uh, Tozawa challenges Ivar, gets crushed. Um, Seth and Drew have a confrontation, ending up with Seth taking a nasty little Alabama slam into the steps, hurting his elbow. So earmark that for their rematch coming up in a couple weeks. That was a tremendous segment. I did like that a lot. That was the best thing on the show. Yeah, no doubt. Once he said, I pity you, I was like, oh, shit. I was about to say, don't turn your back, dog. <laughs> don't turn. Yeah, he turned his back. What are you doing turn your back, man? <laughs> you don't say no shit like you that. You know he's coming turn- after you. <laughs> you know you done fucked up, right? <laughs> you know you done fucked up. I'm like, why is he turning his back? Uh, yeah, you are, you deserve this. In the history kicking. of wrestling, never, no one's ever walked out of the ring like that and just walked up the ring. <laughs> Unscathed. <laughs> uh, Jey Uso defeats Ludwig Kaiser. And then in the main event, you had the Creed's versus... Finn Balor and Damian Priest for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. Um, they got me. I thought the Creeds were going to take this motherfucker. They got me a couple of times on both Brutus Balls. Neither one of them come through. Finn and Damian Priest retain in a really good close of the show. Tag Team retired retention. I give them credit. I did not think that they were going. This is where I thought they were going to start trying to at least get Damian Priest away from the tag tiles and then have him marching on towards a, a possible – at some point he's going to have to cash in. Um, you know what was a fun little pro wrestling match that you skipped over it was Tozawa and Ivar? Yeah. That, that was um, that was some sports entertainment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, I touched on it. Ivar crushed to, Tozawa. Oh, I missed it. Uh, Zach, what do you got to say about any of that, any or all of it? Yeah, I mean, Creed will have those titles one day. I just don't think – I didn't think uh, last night, or not, I mean, this week was the week, but um, it was a good match. And uh, yeah, Julius, especially, of those Creed brothers, just phenomenal. Man. A dude could be a WrestleMania main eventer one day. Everybody, uh, everybody already, everybody already counting Brutus Creed as fucking Janetti. Everybody's doing it already. Mm-mm. They did the same I thing know, with the, yeah. they did the same thing with the Angelo, our, uh, Angelo Dawkins. No, I'm not doing. I ain't gonna do that. Okay, I think they both got. I mean, but Zach's exactly right. Julius <laughs> <the fucking shit. laughs> He's the shit. He reminds me of Kurt Angle. I was like, holy shit, this motherfucker's legit. Um, so that's why I, I think- watched a video of them like two years ago. Sorry to cut you off, but there was a video of them like, um, and they were just doing deadlifts and then like backflips. They're like on a basketball court. Just doing like deadlifts and power lifts, and then they would immediately do a backflip, and they'd do like another deadlift, like both of them. It was insane. Um, I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "These guys can like learn how to actually wrestle. Uh, they'll be amazing." And they're getting there. But uh, yeah, just the fact that they're in that slot right now is very cool. Um, yeah, they'll get there. Uh, I was a big big fan of this. Said it before for the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're using NXT right. Like when you bring those guys up, fucking see what they can do. You know, let them let them go for a little bit if you believe in them. And it, that's that's honestly what they're doing. So no no complaints on that front at all. Now totally different from the uh, the VKM regime. I was thinking when Carmelo Hayes went over Grayson Wall, I was like, there's no way that Vince would let this happen if this if he was still in charge. Dude, uh, you remember when he just – wasn't it the Raw after WrestleMania when Pretty Deadly was supposed to have a segment? It, it was all fucked up, and it was like, what happened? It's like they yank, Vince came on in there and yanked Pretty He's Deadly. Like, I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't going to let him on the show. <laughs> you he can just, go back to catering He now. just walked in the fucking – yeah, he walked in there. He was like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> They're like psyching each other up right. to go down the ramp. Right. This is it. This is it, boy. (laughs) 
Womp, 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 womp. Um, NXT, just really quick, the Chase U uh, uh, segment, I think, was the obviously the standout portion of it. Andre Chase now reduced to shooting crabs to get money for Chase U's He's dance. shooting it, crabs without the mud, and he owes money to the Italians. <laughs> like, Shawn Michaels does not give a <laughs> fuck. fuck. It's like higher learning up in, <laughs> over on NXT, man. <laughs> <laughs> all you motherfuckers involved. I was like, damn, why, how are they all the minorities all involved in all the Shawn legal Michaels shit? is that John Turturro part on fucking on Do the Right Thing, where he's just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Basketball dunking. <laughs> Spear chucking. I wasn't going to say I'll that say part. <laughs> 360 degree basketball dunking. Spade Muya, Go the fuck back to Africa. <laughs> it was like, damn. You still working for him? All the NXT guys are in the back like, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> guy's got us psyched up. That's great. Um, and then the Ridge, Howe, and uh, Ilya dragging off. Angle, let's just talk about that for a second. So, obviously, if you haven't watched it, um, Ilya Dragunov in kayfabe style gets injured <laughs> by Rich Holland in some sort of freak DDT move where he lands on the neck wrong. They bring the doctors in and they stretch Ilya Dragunov out. Okay, I'll just say this. I get what Shawn Michaels is trying to do. Not a fan of it. As someone that is still a little in his feels about Big E not being around, I just don't think this is the move to make. Didn't like the angle. No, not at all. Do you think that the angle was meant to evoke? So you think it's obvious that we were supposed to think this is a shoot and it's because Rich Holland is a dangerous worker. Has the reputation of being the dangerous worker. So you think that was you think this is a work shoot? Yes. Okay. Is that what you think, Zach? Yeah, definitely. I didn't like it either. I mean, I'm saying work shoot, not as opposed to a shoot, but as opposed to a, a. I guess what I'm saying is, do you think they're playing into the idea that Rich Holland has a history of being a dangerous worker in shoot style, not kayfabe style? Uh, oh, I think they're still in kayfabe. Yeah, it's, it's still it's, it's still in yeah. kayfabe for sure because. The way that... That's what I'm asking. The way that... I don't... Because I wasn't sure. Like, it looked to me like they were trying to make it look like this was a huge fuck-up. Shoot. I think they were trying to make it, it a sh- look be, like a shoot. I can, I can go either way, but I, I feel like they're not, um, you know, they're not getting too meta with it, but it is kind of a meta angle already. Um, I just wasn't a fan of it because, really, none of the Rich Holland injuries have been... Like there's the things that could happen to anybody. It's just he had like kind of two in a row where he was working with folks like pretty close together. It, it wasn't like a Nia Jax thing. So I almost feel like they shouldn't put that on him because it really wasn't uh, his fault. Um, I know Becky was like laying into Nia, <laughs> like she was saying, you know, like yeah, everybody that's been in the room with he's been in the hospital and like. Not in a worked way, <laughs> you know. No, that um, that promo seemed a little testy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, y'all motherfuckers just go ahead and fight, get this shit over with. Damn, this has been five years. Um, I don't know. I just don't like. I don't like them playing. I don't like Shawn Michaels playing into the injury angle. For me, the way that I looked at it, interpreted the the finish or whatever, it's. Rich Holland was getting ready to do a move, and then somehow he got hit, and the legs went out from underneath him, and he ends up falling on Ilya incorrectly. So in that part, that's the the shoot. Or I'm sorry, that's the kayfabe part of it. Just the way he fell made it, at least in my mind, made it look like I didn't mean to do that. It happened. It didn't look very dramatic. No. Is that what you're saying? Not not to where I was like, okay, he's hurt, but I was like... Right. It was like he felt kind of funny. Yeah. And then that's when, you know, the referee gets involved and you, and you start I'll playing into you, that angle. I'll tell you why I don't like it. And it it probably has more to do with the fact that I think we're not going to get a Dragon off match at New Year's Evil. Um, I think why I do like it... Is that what it's called? Yeah. New Year's Evil? Mm-hmm. Why I do like it is because... 
I mean, Carmelo was trying to get Trick to make it a triple threat anyway. So if we get Trick versus Carmelo, if Trick has to put up his Iron Survivor or gets duped into putting up his Iron Survivor uh, uh, automatic shot at the title, then I want to see that match. I want to see that Trick Carmelo match. I want to see what happens with this story. And so I think that they're telling a really interesting story, especially with it because the Carmelo asking Trick to make it a triple threat. I was like, this, what, what's he th- talking about? Shit, but like, get me in, coach. <laughs> after, after the injury angle, I'm like, oh, well, that it, they're telling a whole story and they're doing it well. You know, it's like the part at the beginning didn't make sense until the part at the end. No, it's uh, it's it's an interesting turn. Obviously, we're curious to see where it ultimately ends up leading. But just for me, I think that you could you could have used Rich Howen a little better and try to get him away from the stigma of a, the guy that hurts other guys. Maybe this is his punishment. It can't have to be on the NXT angle with their champion. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Um. Okay. Yeah, I thought that. I thought NXT was really good. Yeah, yeah, entertaining as usual. Couldn't couldn't be good laughing. Job. Guys. What's H- up, Hank and Tank versus Gallus too? Um, Gallus went in the way they, they should have won, taking advantage of their the inexperience is is the smart way to go. That chase you shit. God that damn, that really. Woo! <laughs> I can't wait for next giving, week. Giving Andre Chase of all people, giving his character a gambling problem is just. Chef's kiss, man. <laughs> that is so good. I was about to say, this motherfucker has been talking the ultimate, you know, big game, you know, I'm just above above reproach. And now all of a sudden, behind yeah, man, the scenes. man, he runs a tight ship. <laughs> <laughs> and behind the scenes, all, shit, all shit's going in. <laughs> I love the train wreck, dude. I will be lying if I said otherwise. I mean, they're telling a story about America. <laughs> <laughs> Enter downfall of fill in the blank here. Uh, all right, let's get to that two count. One, two, three. Two beer. What's the two count? Two count. Go over some AEW stuff. Um, you know, normally, not always, but normally Rampage is pretty skippable. But uh, this, at least for the main event, was not one to skip. Um, main event for this top flight in action and Dreddy was uh, versus Kenta L Zero. Uh, Commander and Vikingo, dude, this was like a legitimate like five star party match. This thing ruled. Zach special uh, party it, match, man. It was a fun. It, it really was fucking was. awesome. I saw like ten things I've never seen before. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It was nuts. Jericho even like Jericho was on commentary and he was having a fucking great time watching these guys. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Top Flight and Andretti are quite a team. And um, them, you know, beating the Luchadors and, you know, they're kind of the next challengers to the acclaimed to Billy Gunn. I think they should take it from them, really. Yep. yep. Darius Martin or uh, Dante Martin's been out for a while, and they were high on him before, and they should go back to it. I mean, it looks like he doesn't really look like he's lost a step um, thus far. But, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Have it take it off the acclaim. They're cold. He, he, ain't no ooh to that shit, man. That motherfucker over here telling truth bombs, man. Please. I'm about to say, claim shouldn't be fucking tag, oh, trio champions anyway. They should have been, still should be chasing after the titles that they lost and they claim that they love. So, fuck that. Top flight and that, Action Andre are hot as fish He's grease right up. now. Man, let them motherfuckers cook. I said it a while <laughs> ago before Dante came back that this is the way they should go. Hell, they wanted to take the titles off of uh, Gates of Agony and Brian Cage. I know that motherfucker's up for grabs too. Either or, man, you just got to push these guys. Um, I love that. What else we got? Uh, so we had a uh, collision. We got some more Continental Classic stuff. We had uh, Andrade versus Claudio. And uh, this is kind of a hell of a match. Uh, these guys can both go. Uh, Andrade, you know, kind of working like a smaller guy next to Claudio. That's not something he really gets to do in AEW a lot because he's just, he's not a big guy, but he's bigger than a lot of there. This is he's like he's carrying more muscle than he probably should. Um, keeping that WWE body for whenever he's ready to jump ship. Whenever it's like Damn, dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tell him when he's telling lies. 
But, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought this match was exactly... I mean, I don't know. There's not a whole lot... Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about a lot of these matches. I'm just going to sound like a broken record. The C2 has been tremendous. It's been really fun, and it's uh, coming to a head. This match delivered. It was completely uh, and totally worth watching. Felt like it could if they would have uh, given another five minutes, would have been a pay-per-view level match. Claudio with the little fuckery at the end to, to seal the deal. No problem with that. It, it's kind of the a small receipt for... Uh, Andrade going after Danielson's eye the week before. They did have the beef post-match. Claudio gets his this is small, the small little revenge here. <laughs> um, I'm just, not disappointed, just a little surprised, that's all. But Claudio's one of the top guys, at least in my mind, in the AEW. He, he was in, he's in this tournament for a reason. So in that scenario, him beating Andrade, is more so me being disappointed for Andrade versus mad about the result of the uh, the match itself. Yeah, Claudio didn't lose that much. So. No, uh, no, I ain't mad. Uh, Orange Cassidy versus uh, Bounty Hunter Brian Keith. I'm not familiar with Brian Keith. Um, I don't know if anybody else is, but Orange Cassidy uh, unsurprisingly won. Uh, anybody else familiar with him before this match? Not familiar with him. He was also the uh, the TBA entrant on uh, the six-man match on Final Battle. Um, that's how we got this match at Collision because Final Battle was Friday night. I'm not familiar with him, but I've heard of him. I've seen uh, – shocking, I know. I've seen a couple of matches of his. Uh, so a couple guys have uh, sent me their, the match via uh, Twitter DM. Um, he never wrestled on Strong, did he? No. No. Um, Mostly, like, comes from Texas, but mostly feels like he wrestles on the West Coast, um, Pacific Northwest, or whatever the case may be. But uh, what you see is what uh, what you saw on ROH, if you watch Final Battle, or this match versus Orange Cassidy, that's who Brian Keith is. And he's one of the guys that nobody really knows unless you are living there locally, he comes to your town, or wherever the case may be, you get a glimpse of him at that point. But... There's plenty of talent there. I'm just not sure how he's going to fit in. He probably fits more in the ROH than AEW. I liked him. I liked him. Uh, but more importantly, I like this hat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's we leading in that law shit for sure. We got more uh, FTR, House of Black stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, AEW is criticized about, uh, oh, they just put on matches and then you know they're not like building stories too often before especially like with pay-per-views um, it seems like the matches get thrown on there and they're always banger matches um so it's kind of forgiven um even though they do tell stories often it's just that not always with all of the roster and what's funny about this is i don't think the story makes sense i don't really give a shit about it i'm just like put these motherfuckers in the ring <laughs> i don't need like Malachi Black burning pictures of the actor's family or anything or whatever they're talking about. I have no idea what they're talking about ever. Just give me FTR and any combination of the House of Black and just put it on any show of the day of the week and I'll fucking watch it happily. What he said. Jason too, huh? Um, yeah, I think that the less that I have to Listen to FDR cut their corny ass promos, the better, man. Like, listen. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe it's not even House of Black. Maybe it is FDR. Yeah. I don't know. They are, they are so corny, man. And listen, Dax, if you don't want your kid and your wife to be brought into it, stop bringing them up, bro. You talk about them all <laughs> the time. Day. Yeah, I know. Every day. Seriously. I mean, it's a little hard to defend. It's kind of weird to burn a picture of them. I mean, that's strange, but, you know, they're heels. Exactly. Um, that's not a. It just the the House of Black, you know. Even the in a heel mentality. Talk about my daughter. Yeah, right. Um, even in heel mentality, yeah, doesn't even son. make sense. You know, it, their perspective is all jacked up. You know, they they're not trying to be family with House of Black. I mean, come on. You know, we we know this. So let's just stop that. I'm totally with two beer. These are four guys. You can just roll the ball and just let them do their thing. Dude, Swerve cut a promo over a crib. And you're going to talk about that? <laughs> I'm 
just saying. I'm, pretty... I'm just keeping it. Per- I'm just. I'm just trying to draw some uh, perspective. Yeah, I know. S- uh-huh. Swerve doesn't wear mascara. I guess it's. Ouch! Okay. How, how do you How do you know Velveteen? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe he does. Go go! Everybody, keep your um, head down. The shrapnel flying. <laughs> Uh, Chris Statler, Willow Nightingale beat Mercedes Martinez and Diamante in a Texas street fight that might as well not happen. Um, Damn. And, I mean, I, don't know, I didn't do anything for the show. It was fine. So. Uh, you, skipped, you skipped Thunder Rosa coming back. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, I forgot oh, about that. You're right. Oh, no. So that, at that part, that, uh, that is a kind of a – big deal because she's a former champion. There's a lot of controversy around Thunder Rosa with her uh, dropping the title or maybe not wanting to do business. But she's also, got heat. Yeah, being like legitimately hurt because she sat out for a long time. She's been on commentary. And uh, yeah, she came back. She was on commentary. Uh, she's always there, uh, but she's just never featured. Um, and then, uh, yeah, she came out. No no makeup to, or, you know, no Thunder Rosa makeup because she came out. But um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, she's a good wrestler, and I think she adds something to the division, so uh, that's cool. I forgot all about Don't that. Don't you think it was kind of weird how she came back? Like, she just came through the crowd and, like, her no, music? She came from commentary, because she's on Spanish commentary every week and has been for months. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, she's a Spanish commentator. I thought she was American. Nobody throws nobody throws people through announce table so you don't see her having to stand up every single week like you went on WWE <laughs> 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 that, thing, that thing's more abused than fucking Sasha Gray man like, oh! <laughs> that's a deep cut man Sasha Gray even in the <laughs> lexicon that's more... dude you've been planning that haven't you you've been planning that for no. like weeks <laughs> well I just thought uh I just thought of, like, in my head, I was like, it's been abused more. And I was like, what's a very abused thing? And that was just the first thing I thought of. <laughs> Go back any uh, further. I, it's like I, Nina I Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't mean to call her a thing. Just now. Um, oh that's even worse. God. <laughs> really, Holy it's got shit. to at that point. Um, oh, man. Of. All but, right. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, getting back, um, we had... Uh, Skip over some of the stuff. Um, and another kind of a classic match uh, Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Garcia. Um, and uh, Eddie Kingston won this match, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I um, I might have been like at this point. I watched this like pretty late. I don't remember a lot of this. So if anybody has anything to spark my memory, I don't, um, I don't remember this match all that much. Um, Really more of a back and forth kind of match. Daniel Garcia just kind of get going back into more of the the pro wrestler uh, portion of the program, a little less sports entertainment. It did come out a little bit towards the end, but uh, he got the dance in, and that's you know that's usually what everybody's waiting for, and, and it got the usual pop in or whatever the case may be. Um, just basically, the story is just another hard luck, hard luck loss for Daniel Garcia. Uh, took a couple of spinning back fists, if I'm not mistaken, from Kingston to seal the deal. So in that scenario, they kind of protected our Garcia on the way out the door. But uh, Eddie stays alive, and Daniel Garcia obviously eliminated coming into the match. Well, no, I think he was still mathematically alive coming into the match. So this loss officially uh, eliminates Garcia. So now we're at the point of does Daniel Garcia score points or not in the uh, the Continental Classic? So, in that scenario, it, it did uh, serve its purpose and once again with um, with Eddie going over. Eddie stays alive going into next week, and then unfortunately Garcia being eliminated. So, oh no, I thought it was a pretty good match. It's just um, just disappointing for Garcia. That's all. Even with the loss, I feel like Garcia is like the new pillar. Like MJF is not a pillar anymore. He's the top of cream of the crop. Um, Jungle Boy is suspended indefinitely. Uh, Sammy Guevara, he's still in that mix. And then uh, Darby's like climbing Everest, or you know, like you never count on Darby Allen for anything, like even a ride, you know, like damn, you know, like, like you guys, Darby I mean, the motherfucker has skateboard. I mean, what the fuck? 
You don't ride on a skateboard? He's awesome at what he does, but you never know when he's just not going to, like, I don't know, be a wrestler anymore or whatever. But uh, I think Dan Griffey is the future is what I'm saying, even with these losses. Um, him being in there in the mix, um, he is the future. So, uh, and then we had a match that didn't wake me up. Uh, so I remember this one very vividly. Uh, Brody King versus Brian Danielson. Man, Danielson really put Brody over as, like, a real monster here. Uh, busted open, like, tore off the, the eye patch, busted open his eye. Took multiple psycho knees to, to put him down. Uh, this this match fucking ruled. And um, I really think, uh, you know, even though there's, there's been some guys that have just taken a lot of L's, and that's kind of the story, like Daniel Garcia. Uh, on the flip side, there's guys like Roosh, uh, even Mark Briscoe, who we all know is one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time, like putting on just clinics every single week. Um, Swerve has, in on top of the, the, um, win over hangman and then coming into the continental classic like uh this tournament has elevated him uh but brody is a guy that's really been elevated by this and uh this is a killer match this match was fucking awesome uh brian danielson like zach said made him look like a fucking monster uh brian danielson always has tells the best stories uh, always builds to the best climax uh, in a uh, in an AEW ring, at least. So I was a big fan of this match, also. Brody King looks good. I mean, you know, he, as a monster of House of Black, I think that's uh, always a good thing to have the um, the big guys as a constant walking threat at any given point. Unfortunately, I, you probably knew he was going to take the L here, but he did look strong in the loss. All you can really ask for from that point. I'm just curious to see what happens with. The guys that aren't uh, Moxley, Swerve, Switchway, what are we going to do with Roosh, Brody King, guys that have looked good, how are we going to keep that momentum going? That's my bigger question that way. To me, all these guys are going to – could be a world champion in some form or fashion, probably more so in ROH for most of these guys. But there is talent in this competition, this tournament. And it's just it's now on TK to capitalize on this pu- this little small push for Brody King. Same way for Roosh. You know, guys that are there that can be built up should be built up. So I'll be curious to see about those guys. Nobody's coming out yeah, of this tournament gonna... looking bad. No. no, no, it's all it's all about the follow up. And like when you think about the uh, Swerve, uh, you know, it's like okay, he went over Hangman twice, and they had a great feud. And- fucking excellent matches, uh, almost stole the show on both of the shows they were on. And then they're like, okay, what are we going to do with him? And then he goes to the Continental Classic, and then now he's like uh, confronting MJF. And it's like, okay, that's exactly what you do. Um, so hopefully we can do some other stuff with these other guys in the same vein. Um, speaking of Swerve, he opened up Dynamite with uh, versus Roosh, who's also had quite a showing. Swerve uh, had a great Dynamite. Is, Swerve had a good Dynamite. He really did. Uh, absolutely. Uh, fantastic match with with Roosh, uh, he ended up going over. I think Roosh is only big kicked up. He's got a ton of charisma. He's, like, super aggressive in the ring. Good-looking dude. Like, carries himself like a star because he's, he's been a star. Like, he's been – he's ROH world champion. But even before that, like, dude's, like, a huge star in Mexico. So, he carries himself like it. It's just this American audience, like, um, you know, maybe maybe he needs a mouthpiece. I don't know. But he's, he's looking good. But uh, Strickland goes over him and a, and a great opener. Yeah, this match cooked. Uh, I love the way that Zach said it. Uh, this is exactly what they should have been doing with Swerve coming out of that Hangman feud. Um, we'll talk about him and MJF later, but this match, this, this Continental Classic, man, this is this is AEW at its best. It's putting the best wrestlers out there and letting them wrestle for stakes. No, this was a good open. Dare I say, great open. Um, Roosh coming in with the uh, the bandage around his leg was a bit of a target. Ne- never really factored into the finish, but uh, this is just sort of just doing all kinds of just crazy shit. He ain't got no business doing. I mean, damn, you just doing five forties off the top just because you can. We get it, motherfucker. You know, you that dude. It's it's been a Swerve Strickland. Amazing last six-month run. I expect huge things for Swerve in 2024. 
at some point he needs to be a world champion. I don't even give a fuck. It's for five fucking minutes. But at some point, he needs to be the guy to be the, the swervesants. The swervesants. It shall be, you know, the, starting in 2024. He should have a monster year if uh, if it all plays itself out right. But time will tell. Obviously, we got uh, a couple hurdles to get there between now and uh, the end of 2024. But uh, I expect some big things from Swerve. I need to trademark that. Like yeet. now, like yeet. Yeah, do it now. <laughs> Nobody do it <laughs> unless you're like a trademark lawyer out there. Give me a call. DM me. <laughs> um, B- Bill Veggie, know. Charlie Sheen, six nine twenty four seven at gmail dot com. <laughs> at gmail dot com. There's a four twenty in there somewhere. Yeah, right. Um, the uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, um, I think strike while the iron's hot with Swerve, but, um, you know, one thing I was thinking about was Wembley, and, you know, it's like, could Swerve beat MJF for the title? Like, absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, they set this up later on. We can talk about it right now, you know, uh, but um, they had a great backstage interaction. Um, just, they have a lot of history, you know, back MLW days and even before that, but uh, they really overachieved with this talking segment, which is not out of character for MJF at all, but uh, that's a pretty difficult thing to do on live TV is just kind of go back and forth and that kind of setting, and um, it was great, and I was thinking about Wembley, and you know, you got Will Ospreay, and I imagine he's going to be con- contender for the title uh, at, at Wembley, because he's coming in, he's a huge star, and I wouldn't be surprised. Wembley is a Ospreay. far way off, right? That's like August. That's um, what I'm saying. Man. But you know, they, they you you watch how like, quickly that jump that joke is gonna jump on us. Watch, we gonna be talking. I'm saying Swerve is gonna be title holder before that. That's what I was saying. Is like, do you you can go with Swerve for a little while and then, but who who do you have versus Osprey at that point? Do you go with Swerve? Uh, I just don't know. He's he's definitely a main event guy. But that's like an eighty thousand seat stadium. Like, is he at that level yet? Uh, so, or do you... so Swerve versus Osprey doesn't sound like a main event to you at Wembley. It sounds like a fantastic match. I'm talking like marquee value, right? Like as far as like name recognition. No, that's what I'm asking uh, too. Like to me, I think that's bigger than MJF and Cole. I don't know. Maybe, right? maybe it's just because I feel like MJF just on. Maybe I feel like MJF does when in his promo where he's like, I'm, I'm on an extra level. And I think that's kind of true. I think Swerve's getting there. And he's a fucking great wrestler. Yeah, but, but Osprey's I just on wonder. MJF's level. Osprey right? is. That's what I mean. I feel like MJF Osprey is a bigger match. That, that's what I'm getting at. I got you. Jason. But maybe you could have him beat uh, Os- or maybe you could have him beat MJF and then MJF. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a big, long reign. And, um, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I'll just, a, lot, a, lot, a lot going on. I'll just throw my two cents in. It'll be a quick two cents. A lot of this is going under the assumption that MJF resigns, and I'm not sure if he has. I'm not sure you if he scoop? hasn't. No, no. That, that, no, that, I, you, you're the uh, journalist. I'm the fan, man. I, I'm looking at it from the fan perspective. All, I'm, a lot the, of this I'm the sound, journalist. Zach's the money man. You're the fan. Right. And JCB? You holding? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, just just talk to me a little bit. Um, a lot of this is going to, yeah, right. A lot of this is going under the assumption that MJF resigns or as already he has resigned. You know, we twenty twenty four. We were laughing about you know the bid war twenty twenty four. You know, it fell so long away, and now we're here. So uh, let's just. That's something I think going. we're going to have to play it. I'm not he saying he's leaving. Nowhere. I don't think he leaves right now. Maybe four or five years Tony down Khan the line. Tony Khan will not let him go. Four or five years down the line, He'll let's give talk. Give the Jaguars. <laughs> right now, <laughs> I think we're just playing into the assumption of MJF staying. If he stays, MJF Osprey feels about right. If he leaves, Swerve Osprey feels about right. I think he signed. I think he resigned yeah. before he came back from that hiatus. That was a long time ago. I think, I think they. I think he resigned before he jobbed the Ward Wardlow, and this has all been him just being fucking Roddy Piper, Brian Tillman, just so good at what he does. Um, that's just my opinion, though. 
I know I know it's been reported like some WWE people think the same way, but um, I think that I think he felt undervalued, and then Tony Khan ponied up the money in twenty two, and it worked the storyline. It it would be a big shock to me if Tony Khan made this push without having MJF sign. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so um, Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal. Uh, they had a hell of a match because, man, Mark Briscoe has been having um, just a fantastic uh, <clears throat> tournament, um, not as far as wins go. Uh, neither one of these guys have, but, then, uh, but Briscoe gets the win here, and that's his first and only win, and Lethal had none, right? Yep. He, he's old. Yeah. Yep. So that's that. Somebody's O had to go. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it was the O on the uh, the I'll front hand. Um, I can't come up with that, but it, it, it was funny because I was thinking about it. Professional when I was bullshit. That. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the fact that they at least had Mark Briscoe come out and say like this was his rookie year and explain kind of the reason why he wasn't doing well in the Continental Classic. Okay, completely fair. Jay Lethal, on a different hand, I need to see something from Jay Lethal as a result of going scoreless through the Continental Classic. Whatever storyline you want to throw up in, you want to break him away from Jeff Jarrett, fine. If you want to have him, you know, run rough shot through Jeff Jarrett, I don't know. But something has to come out of the Jay Lethal portion of it, too. Mark Briscoe's going to be fine. Jay Lethal, I need to see a little something from on that side. I'll tell you what. it's Mark, Mark Briscoe is really pretty amazing because his brother just died in April or something, right? It was like April or May? Because they had that match with FTR in March. Yeah. Like his brother yeah, hasn't been May. dead very long. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I know it just feels like everybody's rooting for him so hard. Just because. Oh, yeah. I think that's definitely the case. Uh, this match was cool, though. Obviously, these guys have wrestled a million times before. No, yeah. And it looked like it, and, so. Yep. Yeah. I think Jay Lethal is like the, the Turkey Kojima, you know, of our way to AEW now. Like, he's in there to have good matches. And Jesus. And put guys over. Fuck me. He just is. Um, <laughs> I don't even think that's bad. Kojima. No, I'm good. Like, I'm, just, I'm not... I just want more for Jay Lethal. That's just the the, the fan in me. Like, God damn it. They're you stacked. Know? There's so many I'm, good wrestlers. Look, I'm not disagreeing with that. He's okay? old. Here you go. <laughs> I think you guys had this conversation last go. week when I wasn't here and I listened. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, Bill was like, he's old. I'm like, yeah, he's old. He's probably not even that old. But, uh, he's, he's, probably old. Like, <laughs> he's probably like 38. <laughs> say, yeah. Yeah, he's been, been around, around for a while. Years, three beer chiming away, you know, away from his yeah, motherfucker. He is, Joe. He's been around for a while. Let's just say that. That's funny shit. Go ahead, three beer. The show and I'm not on it and I still talk. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, Jay Lethal was born in 85. He's 38. My bad, Lethal. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm old. He's old. We're both from 1985. So. Jay Lethal, um, come find me. I'll apologize in person. There you go. <laughs> uh, MJF and Samoa Joe uh, for, um, you know, a little interaction. Uh, like, the talking and stuff is fine, uh, but this double stuff is a lot because they're in there and then, you know, they're arguing. And then they end up coming together because a bunch of jobbers come out wearing masks and they just kind of throw them around the ring. And um, then they turn into the mega powers again. And um, they accept another challenge uh, from Titan Tron or whatever you call the AEW version. And, you know, it's like, we already saw this and they didn't deliver it last time. So, like, what are they actually going to do? Is there even... Do they even know where this is going to end up? Uh, it just seems so. I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of over it. it uh, not makes... necessarily just. Go ahead. Part. The double part's fine, but it's just you know you got all these jobbers. Like who are all these motherfuckers? Who are they going to wrestle next week? Like just, none of it makes any sense. Well, just just Scooby do one of those motherfuckers. Just grab them and exactly. rip the mask off. <laughs> Plus, yeah. it makes Adam Page look really bad. Like, Joe and MJF fought off, like, 30 dudes. MJF was getting thrown into a car by four. You pussy. Or not MJF. Adam Page getting thrown into a car by four. Come on, man. It's a 
real glass. It's a real class. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, this shit sucked. <laughs> this shit. Come on, let's let's call a spade a spade. This shit was fucking junior league TNA. You accidentally turned it on in 2005. You're like six sided ring. Who the fuck are all these guys in masks? <laughs> the fuck is going on? Jeff Jarrett's here. When did everybody get henchmen? Yeah, yeah I know. It's like. I, this shit was weak. My favorite part, and I, I wanted to tape this and make it a drop, was when uh, Samoa Joe picked up the mic afterwards, and he's like, he's like, John, accept it. We're going to beat, <laughs> I wrote it down, beat his boys' asses. <laughs> like, he was trying to say beat <laughs> his boys' asses, but he was saying the plural of boys, and he said boys's, and he goes, beat his boys' asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is, um, guy, he yeah. sounded like an eight year old. Yeah, yeah. Beat uh, his boys his asses. Go, go ahead. Fucking English major over here. <laughs> oh come on, that is funny. It sounded so funny. It sounded so funny to me. Beat his boys his asses. I didn't even really trip on. <laughs> I'm gonna find until, it until you said it. Now I remember him saying that shit. Um, I don't know, man. I'm. It's so many people that are that feels like they're involved in this angle in so many different ways. And there's so many people like in limbo waiting for something to happen. Roddy, the kingdom, Wardlow, MJF, Samoa Joe, Paige, everybody. There's like, I just named like seven or eight guys that are involved in this angle. And we're all waiting for something. This was some bullshit matrix fucking agent Smith from the you know the second one when you had all the Agent Smiths starting to come out, Neos biting them all out. That's what I was thinking Ooh, when that I first fucking rules. And that shit, then that was <laughs> some bullshit that I saw on Wednesday night. When Neo that grabs, pissed me off. Neo grabs the uh, lamp. The post is like, I was like, around. hell yeah, you better do something. <laughs> shit, these motherfuckers are still coming, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I was waiting for at a certain point for this. Somebody to, like rip up the the, uh, the ring post and start hitting these motherfuckers fucking the jobbers with the shit it is this was so fucking bad that now i don't even care what happens next week move the fuck along please please we need somebody to be He's unmasked i don't give a fuck who it is like this motherfucker said scooby do the first motherfucker that comes in the ring get him in the headlock and just unmask him i mean him. it's real scooby doo because he's like hmm, there's a beer bottle <laughs> it's like oh there's a mask directly in front of mogul well, embassy's see, room i'm just like dude get the fuck out of here that's how we gonna do this shit i, da -da, da -da, there is, da -da, da -da, da -da. I mean they it's, have it's to like, get this right they like, have to get this it's right. like fucking fashion police <laughs> at least that shit was funny i mean this shit is like dude Man, fashion this police bad. was funny i know that shit was funny this shit was bad to watch and now we're getting like Where three the fuck beers is tyler set. breeze uh, it, i think he's backstage somewhere that don't don't quote me on that three beers said it right they tried it two weeks ago, didn't happen. Now we're doing it again. Same stakes, same setup. Man, pull a trigger or something. Jesus Christ. Fuck. The only realistic part, it is just like the devil to try to get you to beat off 20 guys at once. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> God, God, God damn, dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we had uh, Rio versus Soraya, and uh, this is a fine match. Uh, outshined by Tony Storm on commentary, uh, she was great on commentary. Like um, she stole uh, Excalibur spit by throwing it to commercial, and uh, <laughs> you know she said she did her whole like chin up tits out. And she's like, oh, speaking of tits, that was a nice move by Soraya. And uh, she talked about she her tits a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's not even like her primary feature. Don't uh, mind but, it. Uh, Don't mind it at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. Rio, Rio beats Soraya. And then uh, afterwards, uh, Tony again eclipses the entire situation. She comes out because uh, Rio's going to get a championship match out of this. And uh, she acts like she can't see Rio because she's so small. So she pulls out fucking <laughs> opera glasses. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was Tommy Central. Nigga, that motherfucking Tony Storm is wild as hell, man. I cannot wait for this match. Actually, I think the match is going to be good. Tony Storm has just been really good on this time with uh, Tony Storm gimmick. Mariah May coming in to help um, Tony get post match. And, Mar- and uh, Tony's just like, no, I don't appreciate your help. I'm just like, God damn, dog. <laughs> That's Tony Storm being heel 101, and I'm here for all of that shit. Uh,. Roger Strong beat Commander in a fucking awesome match. I mean, just that. You just say those two guys, and you're like, oh, yeah, I bet that ruled. Yeah, it definitely ruled. That bra- that um, backbreaker finish? Woof. Woof. Oh, yeah. I was like, God damn. <laughs> I was talking to this motherfucking vice last night, and I was just finishing that shit up. I was like, yeah, I just, I'm getting ready to start the main event. I was, didn't want to say anything, but I was like, just finish, motherfucker. I fucking, Holy I fucking, shit. I fucking love Roderick Strong. Yes, very much so. Not a huge fan of the, the screaming of everybody's first names, but everything oh, man, else that is that shit's perfect. getting over. I know it is. I just, I, it's not for me. Jason! <laughs> Jason! Well, fuck, I'm right here. <laughs> Poor Renee is just like, damn, back up. It's getting over. It is, no question. I, talking about uh, shows that they've been to recently, um, both AEW and WWE, and the big thing that's over right now, because you know whatever, you're at a show and it's a big show and people are like yelling and like they're doing catchphrases and stuff. There's like people in the crowd, like when you're walking out. Um, the big thing is LA Knight's yeah. Yeah. He's doing the yeah. But the other thing is uh, Roger Strong, Adam, or when he yells Samoa, like that's his first name. <laughs> that's funny. To be. <laughs> to be. I was going to say, that when he's yelling Samoa, I, I would be lying if I said. I would be giggling my ass off because it's just, it's not even his first name. And it's just, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to yell it. Samoa! My best friend by proxy. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? That, that's the part that, that's when Roddy Strong makes me laugh because everything is by proxy from Adam Cole. So in that scenario, that's why I think for me, that strikes me as funny. And once again, it goes back to the whole devil thing where if Adam Cole is the devil, then a lot of this stuff that they're doing makes sense. If he's not, then a whole bunch of shit in this ain't going to make sense. It is so important like, to get this right. I feel like it got to be Adam Cole. Um, just it's like as far as like the level of whoever it is, like if people are going to be disappointed, I don't really have any super strong feelings about it. Um, but I know there will be disappointment if it's not somebody cool. What did um, it mean when it said "Don't be a hero"? Or do you think you're a hero? To MJF. I mean, it seems kind of obvious that it's Wardlow, right? No. You think that's a red herring? I think Wardlow feels like he's one of the four guys that's involved. Um, Kingdom, Roddy, Wardlow. Oh, you think it's like a conspiracy? Cole. Oh my god, it, that's what it's going to be, isn't it? It's gonna feels be all like of the, them. it's going. It feels like the group. new faction or whatever. Um, They're going to be like, we are the devil. We are Wardlow. It's going to be like Negan on Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, I don't know. I just like I said, it just feels like this is a. Uh, it's all in a holding pattern until they figure out who the devil is, when they're going to pull the trigger, yada, yada, yada. And it kind of... It being... Go ahead. Sorry. It oh, go being ahead. Adam Cole makes sense because all, we're all complaining about it dragging out. And it being Adam Cole makes sense because he wasn't supposed to get injured. You know, so... Yeah. That almost seems like the most logical thing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, mm-hmm. uh, then, we, then we had a show that... A match that the main event... Literally any show, fantastic Wednesday night of, of wrestling. But uh, John Moxley and Switchblade G. White, and man, these guys went at it. Moxley surprisingly did not bleed, um, and he also surprisingly did not go over. Uh, so this sets up a three-way uh, situation. So, I mean, between Impy and Mox and Switchblade and then a three-way, and like I feel like this is like Bill's kind of situation here. Like I'm sure he loved all of this. Uh, but... Um, 
Then we got a three way for uh, it's going to be Moxley, uh, Jay White, and uh, well, Swerve. Uh, so, and then they they shot an angle where they took out Moxley's knee. Um, so he's got to like go into this thing injured. Um, so yeah, fantastic match, fantastic angle. That's uh, another fantastic match, uh, and it also kind of makes it realistic because they didn't just have like a clear tournament winner. There, it's like, hey, this is like a real tournament, like. This kind of shit can happen. So um, I was into it. You couldn't tell. Yeah, this uh, Moxley versus Jay White. I popped when uh, Moxley got pinned I, because Moxley does not lose very often. He does not get pinned. Um, and I thought they were just going straight back for Moxley Swerve. This, like Zach said, for your boy, is a perfect storm. Give me that three-way. Um. Very surprised that Mox lost. I just assumed that Jay White was going to be taking the hard luck L, but switch weight winning queen as a whistle is something that I'm here to see. I just think the, the triple threat is a, a little bit cute, especially when you have Moxley doing another triple threat over in New Japan. Now you have the triple threat here. Um, oh, I forgot For me, that. it's I would rather just have – I don't care who it is. You got three guys. Swerve's got to be one of the three. Have him face either Switchblade or Mox. Um, and then at that point, you just move on from there. For me, it would, it, I get it. I get it. Jay White stays strong. Swerve needs to be there. And Mox has been running the, the whole thing from the start. I get the triple threat. For me, it's a little too cute. Well, they all they all already faced each other because it was around Robin, so they already right. Did that so I mean, order. yeah. So I mean, in the head to head, nobody get nobody has the advantage. And, so I and get who's that. who's in the other bracket? Who's winning? Danielson. Um, if I remember correctly, Danielson and Andrade can advance with a win or a tie. Badass. Badass. Um, well, then from that point, uh, like Eddie is still involved, he he has to uh, he would have to win and get some help, I'm sure. Um, I think it, I think it's Eddie versus Mox in the in the finals. That's what I thought at the very beginning of this thing, and that's, that's, I'm gonna stick with it. I said Mox and uh, Danielson. I'll stick to that. So Eddie's not gonna get a chance. You don't think that Eddie's gonna get a chance to defend his? Uh... Nothing wrong with it, but I mean, I I think him going to the final day. With a chance to win, I think that's, you know, that's a solid sto- story to the way to end this portion of Eddie Kingston's run as champion. All right. He put his last $30 on the roulette table and just lost in one round. <laughs> one spin. <laughs> <laughs> he was leaving um, anyway. Fuck it. You guys can talk. Uh, I, I mean, that's it for, for me for two count. If you want to do Final Battle for three. I didn't watch Final Battle. I had the entire weekend off. I just sticked around. I played board games. I cleaned the house. I cooked burgers. I'm a Blackstone. I'm just like, this is great. I don't have anything planned. It would have been perfect for a pay-per-view. I, even though I listened to the Thursday show, I didn't even think about this going on, which shows how well promoted the pay-per-view was. Poorly. It was, it was not on my radar. All right, let's get to that three count. One, two, three. You said it. So the three count is final battle. I know Zach didn't watch it, but we can talk about it real quick. Uh, first match on the main on the main card was Vikingo versus Black Taurus for the AAA Mega Championship. Vikingo goes over Black Taurus. Jason, what you think about this match? Uh, Black Taurus does what Black Taurus does. If you don't watch Impact, that that's mainly where I've seen Black Taurus, and he did he did his thing. I mean, he's just, he's a luchador with two hundred fifty pounds on him. He reminds me of. Um, El Hio, uh, El Dr. Wagner Jr. over in uh, No, those people don't watch that. Neither here nor there. Great way to start the the, uh, the Bane show. The uh, right guy obviously retains Vikingo, what, two years plus as uh, the mega uh, AAA champion. So that was the story coming in, and Black Taurus just gave it all you could possibly give, but just comes up short. I can't wait to watch this match because, dude, like, Taurus is, like, the best base. And Lucha Libre, he's so goddamn good. And uh, the king of is who he is. So I'm stoked to see this. I mean, obviously, I loved it. It's got my dude in it. Uh, but this match, mega fun to watch. 
the Kingo just fucking rules. He <laughs> nah, He's a bad motherfucker. It was it was of the year. It was a fun. <laughs> hey, 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 easy, big fella. I was gonna say it was a fun way to start off the uh, the show, and it it it's, it was a perfect curtain jerker match. This is the beefers. Yeah, right? uh, we had the Mogul Embassy, uh, Bishop Khan, Toa Leona, and Brian Cage with Prince Nana defeating TMDK this time with uh, a guy named Fujita. Bad new Tito, bad dude Tito, and Shane Haste. Jason, what do you think about this match? Um, this was for the uh, six, six man. man tiles. Yeah, uh, Jose, uh, Jose Fujita. Obviously, he's uh, one of the well now one of the young lions formerly, but he graduated himself. He's part of the uh, TMDK crew. I was a little surprised to see bad dude Tito as the third man. I just assumed it would be. Haste and Nichols with Fujita, but neither here nor there. Bad dude Tito is a bad motherfucker. You know, the name aside, that motherfucker can go, and I'm a little surprised that he hasn't been signed with anybody as of yet. Neither here nor there. Good, not great. Um, right team went over. Nana gets his boogie on post match. It was, it was, it was all right. I mean, nothing great. It was a nice little fun match. I think Santa Claus is bringing me some TMDK gear. Yeah, you you're about to say I, I got to wait until the, this motherfucker uh, New Year starts before I grab that shit. Team TMDK and Pelicans. That's all. That's 2024, baby. Yeah, that's, that's gonna, gonna be my, that's gonna be my look. <laughs> <laughs> like a New Balance and fucking tube socks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he'll be, be wearing rape kits all over the place. Oh, whoa, whoa. TMDK fanny pack all day. <laughs> wearing it to Six Flags. I just want the shirt, man. That's all. Just kind of jutting my, jutting my crotch out. So <laughs> just in case dudes that look exact like, exactly like me are like, hey, TMDK? <laughs> just, just hold court with a big turkey leg. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Ethan Page defeats uh, Tony Nice in an I Quit match in 20 minutes. Uh, Jason, what do you think about the I Quit match? Um, this is right when I stopped watching ROH on a weekly basis, so I didn't really get to see the, the actual feud, feud build up, but they did a good job of at least telling the story how we got from point A to point B. Um, not surprised Ethan Page won. I mean, Tony Nice is a good worker, but I – I think we see the the ceiling for Tony Nese, unfortunately. Ethan Page getting the save from Scorpio Sky coming off the side of the milk card, and that was a little bit of a surprise to see him come out and help out. But uh, right guy went over it. This was a better match than I, than I thought it would be. I didn't think I didn't have a lot of expectations coming into it, but it was better than I anticipated. Always weird when they wrestle with a microphone. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it, it adds something to it now, I'm you know, from that the, point. I'm going to skip the Nyla Rose squash. Uh, then we have Kyle Fletcher is the new ROH TV champion, defeating Commander Brian Keith, Lee Moriarty, Dalton Castle, and Lee Johnson. What do you think about this, Jason? Um, Lee Moriarty, a, a nice little couple of early eliminations, uh, somebody that – should be getting a look at somewhere down the line. But for me, I'm I'm disappointed in myself that I did not pick Kyle Fletcher off the bat. This is somebody that I had said, you know, had done well in his time when Japan, when Mark Davis got hurt. Now he's over here in the States. Mark Davis got hurt. This was his time to shine. Like I said, for me, I was just disappointed in the fact that I didn't even – Consider the fact that he should have been the, my number one choice. Neither here nor there. That TBD is so enticing when you're picking. Oh no, for sure. And it could, have, and in this case, it could have been anybody. But with the guys, the six guys that are there, as I was watching the match unfold, I was like, yeah, see that that was just a stupid ass pick on my part. But the match itself, I thought was really good. Me too. The last two uh, guys being Commander and uh, Kyle Fletcher, I thought really took that. A good match to a you know a, a really good match. The, yeah, they basically had a singles match, match at, the at the end, and that's why I thought it was really cool about that. You had two guys that could complement each other really well. So, all in all, once again, better than I anticipated. What you think about Wheeler? You to, or Zach? Anything to add? No, I'm looking. I really want to see that match. Let's see. It. Yuta defeats uh, Tom Lawler by pinfall uh, in a pure wrestling rules match in 13 minutes and 10 seconds. Jason. A little underwhelming. I expect uh, a little more. I mean, big Tom Lawler guy. Um, I just, I just felt like this was a little flat. You know, I mean, call me crazy. Maybe it was just me. Uh, yes, I thought that this was a little flat. Also, speaking of flat, uh, Keith Lee defeats Shane Taylor in 14 <laughs> minutes and 40 seconds. 
Uh, what do you think about this, Jason? For the speak on it for a second. Yeah, for the little build that involves Zach. That I, I'll try to do my best for the little <laughs> build that they had for this match. Um, this was this was fine. Um, I guess. For me, it's more about Keith Lee and who he's claiming him is. Him, Keith Lee crossing paths with the Mogul Embassy almost makes me shudder to think that we're going to try to do Keith Lee swerve somewhere down the line. And that, for me, that ship has long since sailed. Maybe, you know, after Swerve has, you know, won the title, you know, we could cross that bridge at that point. Just for me, this feels like doing something for the sake of doing it versus um, having Keith Lee get over. For me, if you did it right now, you just can't have Keith Lee go over. It's just, I'm sorry. I like Keith Lee. I think he's been criminally underused for the most part, whether it's been by booking or injury or the combination of thereof. Neither here nor there. I cannot have Keith Lee facing Swerve right now. It just wouldn't make sense. Shane Taylor, I like. I think he's a good, you know, ROH guy, but that's kind of the problem. You know, ROH doesn't feel like it's a huge priority for Tony Khan. Ultimately, it feels like that's his minor league system, the feeder system, whatever you want to call it, for AEW. And if that's the case, so be it. But um, there's there could have been so much more from this match because obviously they have old ROH ties and they have – history and now you know they're going against each other but it this felt like the the perfect encapsulation of ring of honor final battle it could have been so much more it could have been bigger but they just tony khan just decided okay we're just going to give you know the minimal effort and throw this shit out there and also you had some good matches on here but this is one of these matches, Keith Lee and Shane Taylor, that could have been a lot more than what it was. That's just me. Yeah, uh, they're going to do Keith and Swerve like a year later now, I think. A year, year and a half. Like, how long ago was that? It's been, had- well, it's, like I said, it's been long enough now where I almost feel like, A, I don't care, and B, Keith Lee can't go over at this point. I mean. Oh, no. You know, as much as I, don't I, think, I don't think, yeah. No, no. no, as much as I like, like I said, I like Keith Lee, but at this point, Swerve is just too hot to even be fucking with. It's got to be somebody like Moxley, MJF. That's really about it of the list of guys. Will Ospreay of the list of guys that are in AEW right now that I would be like, okay, Swerve lost to one of these three guys. All right, I'm cool. Outside of that, but lick he, my ass. Yeah, Keith Lee is uh He's a great guy for Swerve to go over right now, though, because he's, you know, an impressive dude. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm here for it. I think they'll put on a good match. And uh, I know what you mean, though, as far as uh, wanting Keith Lee to, to get some wins. But um, yeah, I think I'm being Swerve. Um, up next, we had a, um, a party match. You know, uh, this <laughs> yeah. was a Jay Briscoe Memorial fight without honor. Which was them top guys, FTR, with Mark Briscoe defeating the Blackpool Combat Club, the the Big Brothers, right. uh, Danielson, Moxley, and Claudio, uh, in thirty minutes. What do you think about this, Jason? Wild AF, God damn! Um, I just this is one of those matches that you just got to watch for yourself. Um, I think FTR and Briscoe could be uh, potential. Trios, six man champions at some point, somewhere down the line. I thought this was a good use of all six guys, um, especially when you have the big brothers, like you said, of uh, BCC on the other side. This was as good as, good as I expected it to be. Um, almost thought this was going to be the main event. I was a little surprised it wasn't, but it was in a, a nice spot where you had a match beforehand that wasn't so good. Now you have built it up to where now we're really anticipating these next two matches coming up. This is one of those matches that delivered. So in that scenario, got to give his credit where this is due. Yeah, this is kind of a Zach pay-per-view now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> fucking would have loved this shit. Uh, Eddie Kingston goes over Anthony Henry in five minutes because Henry didn't last ten minutes. He doesn't earn a shot at the uh, ROH World Championship. This was just to get Eddie Kingston on the card. 
essentially, yes. Yeah, um, it was a five-minute match. Yeah, there's uh, no reason for this to even be It, it was the popcorn match before the main event, which was Athena, who defeats Billy Starks in about a half hour. Um, Jason, what do you think about this match? Billy Starks is the truth. Um, that's what, what I'll take away from it. it. It doesn't... 19 years old. It doesn't say... Well, for me, for Athena... Maybe it says this is the time that if you wanted to bring her up to AEW, you could. I would be still a little hesitant with how she's being, she would be booked on AEW, but that's neither here nor there. I thought this was an amazing match. Um, Athena and Billy Starks have some really good chemistry. And like I said, for me, Billy Starks is the truth of, she's going to be the future but, of AEW. But she should have three years. Did you... Did they, heavy, she, did they heavy buy any of the near falls? I honestly didn't think that she was going to win. And and maybe it's just because I, she was 19, 20, whatever the case may be, so super young, and there's you know there's time for her to grow and become the champion. This just feels like this is a, a part of the early story of Billy Starks where – They delivered the, a main event level match, though. Yeah. Flipping on Athena – was weird because I didn't ex- expect to see that coming. So that was a nice little curveball in the storyline. But I think you made, ultimately made the right call. Athena is the class of ROH women right now, and she deserves to go. All right. Uh, why don't you give it a letter grade? I didn't even look at what our predictions ended up being because we had the exact same, and I forgot to ask Zach. It's yeah, just it's a, a, we'll yeah, call it's a wash. wash. Yeah. Um, B. Yeah, I thought it was about a B. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, definitely worth watching. Yeah. Uh, that's going to do it's it. five hours. But yeah, it was, <laughs> I know. <laughs> no Jesus shit. Christ. I'm like, what the there was, fuck? There was, fo- there was four pre-show matches, too. I know. I'm like, man, come on, no, come one, on, come on. two, three, four. Yeah, there was four. Four pre-show, yeah. I was about to say, anytime there was not wrestling on, we are fast-forwarding. God damn, moving along. That's going to do it for a three count. One. Odds and ends. This is banned from ringside. Zach, you got any odds and ends? Uh, no, I mean, I watched the next people here to talk about that. Um, that's it. Jason, you got one? Matt Rose is oh, going well. to MLW. Oh, yeah. I just saw, saw that this morning. Uh, he's going to wrestle uh, Jacob Fatu, I believe, on the 6th of January. So, very curious to see. Riddle back on MLW TV. Apparently, he's uh, going to mainly wrestle on MLW, but able to wrestle other places as well. But MLW is like his primary base of operations for the moment. So it'll be interesting to see him uh, back on the scene. Uh, Mustafa Ali uh, with a nice little promo opening up his uh, world tour. Uh, Not a... I don't think he signed yet, but somebody else out there, uh, Shelton Benjamin, now officially a free agent. So I'll be curious to see where he goes from that point. So, yeah, there's uh, guys that have been released from WWE are now starting to resurface. So 2024 is going to start being real interesting real quick, I think. Zach, any thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I don't think any of those guys are game changer, but they all have stuff to add to a variety of companies. So Dolph we'll see Sager. where they go. Dolph, man. Yeah, I was thinking of Dolph, yeah. Oh, what if Dolph's the uh, devil? I mean, it, it would be like uh, in disbelief because he's been in WWE, but, I mean, even still. No, but I he's been like fired since be... the devil thing started. I don't think he. You the... think? Yeah. Yeah, he was released before the devil thing started. I would almost tend to agree with that, and I'll go this far. Whoo, that would be sick. I'm not I wouldn't jump on the I hate this idea so quickly because Christian Cage was one of those where it didn't was received really, really well when he first came in and obviously now he's one of the top acts in AEW. So, I would withhold judgment, but I wouldn't be terribly disappointed if it was Dolph Ziggler. Oh no, that would be sick. You know you would get good matches. Zach, would that be sick? I don't know. I I wouldn't be. I wouldn't mark out about it, but I would be intrigued. Ooh, I'd mark out if it was Ziggler. It would be somebody that we didn't expect, and like I said, for me, Ziggler Omega, Ziggler Osprey. Okay, that that's where I, my head goes if 
if it's uh-huh. Dolph Ziggler. So yeah, I'm. I get. Look, I, that was I get my boner. I get the full mass portion of the program. I just like I said, we, we heard it. <laughs> we heard it, and the guys here saw it. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be pissed off. Um, it's not Adam Cole, so it's somewhere in the gray. I would be curious to see where they would move from that point. But Dolph wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, and. Uh, this is banned from ringside. I mean, Jason, I don't mean to call you out on some unprofessional bullshit. But you didn't even mention how Roman declared Solo to be the new the heir to the head of the table. That seems like a big thing, right? Are we looking at, and I got reminded of it because you said Jacob Fatu, and I was like, oh, there's a bunch of these NOIE guys that are coming up too. It's like, can Solo have his own faction? Can they have two different bloodlines? <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure there's... And our truth uh, Yeah, I'm sure there's a copyright uh, <laughs> law there somewhere involved. Um, Solo being the, the heir apparent is interesting. Uh, it, I saw well, people comparing our truth to Judgment Day as Sami Zayn to bloodline, and I was like, come on. Okay, yeah, let's slow down. Okay, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Easy, big fella. <laughs> One's funny, the other was goddamn comedy gold. Hey, send that shit my way, <laughs> please. If you're holding, come find me. <laughs> I mean to tell you, I want some of that shit. Um, I'll be curious. Um, uh, Jacob Fatu is is a wild card. I think he resigned okay, I'm just with say, I'm just MLW. Saying, I'm just saying that seemed like a that seemed like a notable thing. No, no storyline no. development. No, right? agreed. Agreed. Uh, Zach, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, it, I thought it was funny. Jay played it off, or sorry, Jimmy played it off really well because you could tell, like, Jimmy was, like, literally rubbing his hands together. Oh, like, yeah. Ready to be knighted. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> it was pretty funny when he tried to congratulate Solo and Solo left him hanging. Right. Because he was just staring straight ahead. <laughs> Good shit. No, it's Solo being a, a, just the perfect straight guy. Just so much potential. Him crushing John Cena is a springboard for possibly big things for him in 2024 as well. All right. That's our odds and ends. This is banned from ringside. We got some birthdays this week. Mauro Ronaldo is 54. Primo Cologne is 41. You think you can tell the Colognes apart? If, no, I'm just going to go and say no. <laughs> Fuck it. Zach, you think you could? I mean, like, from you. <laughs> God damn, that was perfect. <laughs> See, I got that part. <laughs> uh, Oni Lorkin, 38. Otis is 32. Luke Gallows is 40. The Great Muda. Is 61. Jamie Noble, you'll see him in sometimes. He's 47. He was in J&J Security also. Yes. Chris Hero is 44. Miro is 38. Jesus Christ is 2024. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I was ready. That's ball bullshit aside. I'm waiting for him to say somebody that looked like Jesus Christ and then say his birthday. No, I'm talking about the Jesus Christ. <laughs> Isn't he actually uh, 2057? <laughs> no, nah, man. Dude, the best part about going Not to hell is religion. that I'm. Best part about going to hell is I'm be with all my friends. <laughs> Like, they're going to be keeping seats warm for me. Literally <laughs> keeping them warm for me. <laughs> it's going to be hot in the motherfucker down there, man. It's going to keep you warm. Uh, Bart Gunn is 58. Demolition Axe is 70. Would have been 76. Is yeah, would have been 76. Goldberg, 57. China, RIP, would have been 54. Claudio Castignoli is 43. That's Angelina Vega is 33 years old. Lord have mercy. Rabbit fever. <laughs> hey, everybody. We know there's tons of podcasts. Put it away. You, uh, but we appreciate you listening to ours for my beautiful family in there for Tender check. Mahal, check. for Murray the Murray Man, Murray, Double Felicia, check. Chris, for Triple check. Patriot Pat, for check. Vice, check. for... 
Two Beards, Zach Pullman. Check. For Jason Cornelius Bell. Kadichiwa, bitches. Bill Vegi. Check. Check. Black Lives Matter. Check. Support your local weed dealers. Check. Support your local restaurants. Double Tell check. Tell your parents. Hey. Check. Merry Christmas. Triple check, motherfuckers. And never forget to boo the heels. Boo! boo!